Hello everyone. It's another bright and beautiful vacation day, another good day to stream. Very recently I came out with the 500 map cemetery semi-juicing farm video. And given what point in the season we're at here, you might have assumed that my shenanigans on the cemetery map were probably finished by now. But that assumption would be incorrect. Yes, uh, I enjoy doing this farm so much I just can't can't stop myself. Uh, I've been pushing uh, harder and harder on the efficiency, the speed. Uh, it's just something I genuinely enjoy doing. Uh, one thing I've tried recently, uh, I've been trying many things, hitting brick walls, you know, there's a lot of things not working. But something I have tried recently that has been working surprisingly well is tinkering around with the loot filter strictness. Uh, going well beyond any sort of strictness level I've ever done ever in this game with any type of farming whatsoever going way past the tightest default uh, strict uh, filter I mean I'm already the filter I've had advertised for a while now is already basically even stricter than uh, the tightest loot filter uh, selecting only chaos orbs and above essentially uh, picking up now I've been messing with uh, one that's basically not letting me see anything that's worth less than three Chaos Orbs. Essentially, Awakened Sextants, Singular Scouting Reports, some, some things like that, basically. Yes, even Chaos Orbs rotting on the ground in there. Um, but hey, you know what? If it dramatically increases the speed, I can do the run. If it means that in a hundred maps I'm going to find one or two... Or sorry, if it means in six hours of farming, that means I find one or two extra brother stashes, as well as a whole slew of uniques and exalted orbs, things like that. It might be worth leaving that stuff to rot on the ground. It all depends on how fast I can do the run. It all depends on if I can, if the resulting picking up fewer things has a dramatic effect on my speed of the run and given how the whole headhunter momentum shrines timers and all that stuff works certainly a possibility is there and i think i found one with legion so i have not done a video with legion yet there's been one main reason why i haven't done it is because you basically need to run this sextant right here kind of have to run this sextant for legion to be good because unfortunately, a Legion Scarab gives only one Legion, unless you do winged Legion Scarab. Nobody's doing that because it's very expensive. You can't, you can't possibly sustain that one buy it in bulk easily. So, I've always been running Strongbox, as you know. The 500% increased quantity of items, corrupt and rare, plus two or three Strongboxes because they're going super hard on the Strongboxes. Okay, so when I give a full transparency here, I have actually already done this run on stream, in fact, uh, yesterday, and even produced the video, and was about this close to releasing it, but then I discovered, <laughs> once again, something else that I feel it was, was so impactful to this run that uh, I'm, I'm scrapping the entire video and I'm actually doing it again. No problem. I love doing this farm anyway. And, well, for the... Basically, how it went is I did exactly what you're going to see here before you, except I actually dropped the Gloom Shrine, which is something I basically never do. And and I dropped the Gloom Shrine for the this one here, this sextant right here. Now, instead, I'm changing what I've changed my mind on that. I'm putting the Gloom Shrine back in and dropping uh, this sextant. The one with a two additional, sorry, two additional strong box, and instead, uh, so that means I have fewer strong boxes on the map. It means I also have to put a point in the atlas where I was uh, not putting a point before. No big deal. I think every map still has a bare minimum of, of six strong boxes anyway. Yeah, four from the ambush scarab, one from the atlas passives, and one from this sextant here. And it so happens that. Maps actually have a very high chance of spawning uh, strong boxes just as a random mechanic anyway, like multiple. Not, so it's not that big of a deal, really, to lose it. It hurts a little bit because this, this sextant right here is kind of expensive. I am putting a lot of Atlas points into strong box, but hey, I'm just testing a lot of different things, cutting corners where I can. And 
when I drop the Gloom Shrine, you know, my character is exceptionally powerful. I can handle doing a run with no Gloom Shrine. But hey, guess what? The Gloom Shrine helps me clear every single Breach monster. It makes me way more efficient at clearing Breaches. Getting a milking about as much out of that as I can. It makes it so I virtually never miss any monsters on the map. I really do clear like basically 100% of the map. Whereas no Gloom Shrine, I definitely leave a few things on the map still. Uh, Delirium as well. On that note, it makes me just kill straight up faster. It makes me get more Headhunter buffs faster. Maintaining a higher number. Moving faster through the map. Doing more damage. It's just a sort of perpetual, endless... Uh, Thing of good stuff <laughs> uh what this shrine does so i am actually going to come out with a video at the very end of the season kind of highlighting some of the biggest discoveries i've found and i'm going to actually share with you right now probably what i'm going to put number one on that list is the degree by which the gloom shrine in conjunction with going shrines in the atlas and the goal uh the degree by which that improves the efficiency of clear in a map not just because it's good on this face not just because it's good, it's a good synergy with the helmet and the Atlas passives. But even with a character that receives very little benefit, <laughs> uh, synergetically, Tornado Shot, Elemental Damage, does not s receive any sort of inherent bonus to the Gloom Shrine uh, that other builds like Toxic Rain would. And even still, even when that build already has more than enough damage, this shrine and sextant still increases the efficiency and lowers the time mapping by such a degree that I'm still using it. Like, you would think I wouldn't use this shrine anymore. Like, you would think that at this point in the league, with as geared as I am, it makes sense to use this shrine, you know, when you're under geared first few weeks of the league. Sure, to help you clear, uh, to get through a map reasonably fast, but to use it in my character, I mean, it kind of blows my mind that I'm still using it. And I've, I've tested it without it. It's just not as good. It's just not as good. Uh, so we're putting it back in. And it's going to make me go hyper fast through the map. As you've seen before. Except even faster probably. And so I guess what I'm trying to say is this would appear to be my final form. <laughs> this league. For my character, the POB is linked down below. Uh, the Atlas passes will be down below. Uh, Legion... Absolutely making a complete mockery of Legion, getting tons of currency per hour, insane speeds, going like Mario Star Power Gloom Shrine, <laughs> running through the map with nothing stopping me, virtually never dying. And yeah, so here is the Atlas Passives. There are some major changes here. Instead of going to the right, I am going to the left because I'm not picking up uh, any Harbinger nodes. I'm dropping Harbinger. Uh, now, why am I dropping Harbinger in favor of Legion? Well, I, I started testing Legion instead. As I mentioned before, I had to put the extra sextant on. The problem with Harbinger is, is it, it puts a deceivingly small number of monsters on the map for what it is, for the mechanic it is. And I've been playing enough to realize that I rarely ever get a Brother's Stash as a result of the Harbinger mechanic. I see most of them drop from the strong box via the sextant. I see a fair number of them drop from breaches. I see a fair number of them drop randomly in the fog, which has led me to believe that Hunted Traders is probably making quite a few drop. I've seen some drop from Delirium Monsters. I almost never see them drop. Oh, and I've seen some obviously drop from Beyond Monsters. I almost never see them drop from Harbingers. Uh, spawned. Almost never. And you, I mean, you can look through a lot of highlights. You're going to see it almost never happen. Legion spawns a lot more monsters on the map. They do drop from there sometimes. They also drop from the chests, the war hordes and things that spawn from the Legion. And another great thing about Legion that I completely overlooked, or underestimated at least, is incubators. Now, with an extremely tight loot filter, you might think that I would just pass up on all the incubators. Well, that would be kind of stupid because I can put them on my gear as I'm farming and killing stuff incredibly efficiently. And so I do have some incubators, uh, most notably like the, uh, I think it's Obscured Incubator. Kaguran or whatever one is the um, expedition currency as well as the one that just drops regular currency which quite often turns out to be an exalted orb. I've noticed myself having a major increase in exalted orb drops. I've noticed myself averaging I believe at the very least the same amount of brother stash drop but I'm pretty sure I'm, drop I'm getting even more on average. I haven't tested this thoroughly enough to know that for sure but here's some cool things about this build. So 
this Atlas build rather. Four extra percentage points of Delirium that I didn't have before. This is maximizing Delirium chances. Should give me a default 15% chance to spawn Delirium. That's actually pretty huge. Because Delirium does definitely crank up the chance of me getting Brother Stash. It, you know, gets all kinds of extra stuff from it. The Delirium rewards themselves quite often getting Delirium orbs on average about at least one, maybe two. The Simulacrum Splinter count on Cemetery is abysmal. That's fine. I it's so bad I'm not even putting Descent into Madness on here. I'm, I'm getting it uh, points of other places. Still going beyond. Still going as high as I can on the pack size uh, up here. Uh, now, I did drop, obviously, the three in the middle. Because I'm not doing anything that's synergized with Harbinger. I've even dropped three on the outside. Now, this is a little controversial. But I've done that because, A, I want the 4% extra here of Delirium Chant. And I also... I'm a little skeptical as to whether this is worth it or not, but I, for the time being, I do feel like having that extra... Basically, in 100 maps, I'm going to get four extra legions. And I'm also going to get, probably on average, one extra Marikath emblem out of this, as well as Templar emblem, as well as basically all emblems, because of uh, the, these lines right here. And you know what? I think that alone probably does override 3% quantity of things dropped, considering... The average amount of quantity I have on a map is around 200% anyway. Kind of dilutes the number a bit. I don't like taking away. And if there was something else I could do, maybe... I've thought about dropping the pack size on the Influence Monsters too. Anyway, this is how I'm doing it. Increasing for Merketh chance, Templar chance, uh, General's high chance, extra War Horde. 1% chance for Splinters to become Emblems. And you know what, guys? I'm really surprised. And this, this is, you know, kind of inherent in magic finding divination card farming is cranking up the, the highest number of monsters you can and just completely foregoing the mechanics themselves and the actual like currency you get from the mechanics themselves you're not really paying much attention to that i've been delightfully surprised i get a lot of currency extra currency um, as a result of the legion mechanic through the incubators and all of the emblems uh gonna see a lot of different emblems here, so again, full transparency. I did this run 100 maps already. I got 21 Marikath emblems, by the way, which I think was actually pretty lucky. I only got, I believe, 12 Exalted Orbs, which is really unlucky, and uh, only two Brother Stashes in 100 maps. So, it's, bad RNG is not the reason why I didn't post that video. It's because I'm changing what I'm doing a little bit, and I found something else that I think is good. So I'm, I'm telling you, you know, I did, I did have a pretty bad RNG... Uh, run, I, I guess what? I still made 17x an hour, <laughs> even with those figures. Uh, I did get three enlightened gems, however, so that was exceptional RNG on the gems there. So, you know, things tend to average out. But hey, I'm going to show you guys what this looks like. So, that at this Atlas tree will be in the description below. And like I said, P will be in the description below, the usual stuff down there. We have here uh, 11x to cover the cost of the sextants here. Very cheap sextants. This is extremely cheap. Actually, another thing I'm testing is trying to lower uh, the startup fee of the runs. Uh, so I've managed to do that by going from Gilded Ambush down to Polished Ambush Scarab. As well as, you know, a few other little things. Uh, oh, uh, mainly no elevated sextants is a big change as well. That dropped the startup cost down quite a bit. Because guess what? The Gloom Shrine's like basically free. <laughs> People just, just roll over this. It's so common. Nobody's wanting it. It, it. It's definitely the biggest thing that surprised me this season. And I think it's probably the most underrated uh, thing in the game right now. That I know of when it comes to mapping. Particularly Gloom Shrine in conjunction with the Gull. In conjunction with Shrine Nodes on the Atlas Tree. I think is probably the most single underrated mechanic in the game right now. Uh, as far as uh, mapping and increasing your efficiency of mapping and all that so uh this is sextant almost free it's like four chaos a piece this one here is about anywhere between eight and ten chaos a piece this one here is about 20 chaos a piece and these are like 20 or 25 chaos but then hunted traders for most of them because i don't have to run very many to get a bunch of eight modded corrupted cemetery maps hunted traders is about five to ten chaos a piece i can get these in bulk sometimes for almost free Polished Scarabs across the board. Legion Scarab is a lot cheaper than Harbinger Scarab, too. A lot of money saved there, too. So before, uh, I believe it cost me about 46 chaos per run. 
all the way down to about 27 or 28. I, I think it's actually about uh, rounded up to about 28 chaos per map. Unbelievably cheap. Like, that's almost half of what it was before. That's crazy. Uh, getting, just switching over to Legion, which is actually going to give me more currency per map. Uh, now, I was testing the same runs that I was doing before on the new filter with Harbinger. I got my run time from six hours all the way down to four hours, just about four hours. When I was testing this earlier, I, I would, with Legion, Legion takes more time. You have to click the boxes. It, it sucks a little bit. It's so much extra currency though. I really like it. With the current loot filter I have, I was able to get my Legion farm time down to a little over five hours. So with this recent change to Gloom Shrine, putting that back in, I think I can get it down to five hours or less. Which is going to be a lot of added currency per hour just by reducing the time. Reducing time is perfectly fine when things are incredibly easy. To, the, the materials are incredibly easy to acquire. The sextants, very easy to acquire in bulk. Even the very last season of the League is pretty easy. These scarabs, super easy to acquire. Uh, without paying any kind of major premium for them, for the most part. And the maps, of course, I can 100% self-sustain them myself. And then everything else... The Atlas passive is doing most of the heavy lifting. This is a strategy, guys. I mean, this is really good. So, yeah, like I said, I mentioned a few minutes ago, this is, I think, going to be my final form. <laughs> so, let's get this run started. We're dropping you down here. You can see... I need to verify. Start of cost. Okay, 19.46. Yeah, I already had that right here. Okay. We're good. Okay, that number is fair. Uh, you can see things have fluctuated a little bit in price. Uh, don't get too wrapped up in how much currency per hour I'm making this thing. Just just pay close attention to how I'm doing the runs. And, you know, I'll talk about it in the first couple runs anyway. I'll put this back here. Dump tabs are clean, except for B here. Already got the first round of sections in. Gonna run the first map. Not very many of these maps have Beyond on it, by the way. Okay. And we're ready to go. Sorry about that extra long uh, talk at the beginning, but it is kind of paramount. I mentioned some of the really big changes that I'm doing here. I know you guys like the details, so I'm giving you the details. I just clicked the snapshot again. So here we go. We're starting this at... Oh, just right before 9 o'clock local time. So here's what I do first. So, so I always hit the strong boxes on the way because I may miss them later. I'm actually going to skip mechanics until I get to the arena. Actually, before I do the arena, I want to make sure there's not any of these. So let's see, I'm glad. I'm very glad that I hit that. Okay, that that's good stuff there. Because, okay, I wouldn't have got that Elder Chorb of Annulment if I hadn't done that. Okay, now altars are all premium. And the next thing I want to do actually is to... I do hit breaches usually because they're going to add time to the map. They're the kind of thing that takes the real time sink. But I'm going to clear breaches. I'm going to focus on legions. I've been going back and forth with kind of picking up loot on the go versus not and doing it later. I'm going to try doing it later after the fact. Right now I want to see how it feels. Oh, I forgot. I got to change my uh, favorite map. <laughs> So I just want to make sure I, I scout the map, get all the strong boxes. I got two legions and two breaches to do at least. Uh, with the gloom shrine and my character, I mean, unlocking a legion ASAP is a complete joke. Like I said, I'm just making a complete joke of the map there. You can see I got a covetous shrine there a little late, unfortunately. A little bit unfortunate, but that's okay. Sometimes the bosses don't drop loot unless you sit on them a second. That's usually kind of a good idea. It looks like this map just kind of spawned its default mechanics. Nothing extra on the map. Definitely didn't really get any major loot. So this map will look quite loot la uh, lackluster there. You saw I, I did pick up a couple of chaos orbs. It's only because it came in a stack of two. 
but this is just so much more enjoyable way less clicking on the hands super easy on the hands I'm already done looting this map and oh actually one second here I kinda I didn't realize he's not dead so that stupid boss gets his bloody immunity phase which is really dumb now Templar emblems uh, or Templar uh, Splinters, usually I don't see them unless they kind of double up in stacks, or they become an emblem, obviously, I'll see that. Okay, and yeah. Forgot to change over to Cemetery. I was collecting some promenade maps. Just so you guys are aware, there probably is going to be one more farming session I do before the end of the league. It will not be a sort of ultra turbo speed cemetery semi juicing thing it'll actually be something a little bit different so i want you to be aware that kind of got probably one more video like this coming down the pipe here we go second map so kind of same thing my focus is to grab the gloom shrine real quick to get oh that's great right there to get uh any, uh, any of the other shrines, hit a breach on the way through to get to the map boss. Kind of focus on, oh yeah, and hit the altars, obviously. Open the strong boxes. I'm going to skip breaches and actually in this weird case, I'm going to do these because it's kind of dead-ended. I'm going to lose time if I don't do them. In fact, these are so dead-ended that I'm even going to loot them on the go. Yeah, there's a Merketh. One. Now, here's one reason I don't do looting on the go a whole lot, because I got Shroudwalker right now. And it's uh, kind of screwing me over a little bit. Don't necessarily have to get some of these bad chests up there. Oh, we finally found the boss room. Okay, there's another breach down here. I actually want to find that breach before I uh, do that legion. I want to just open it because, you know, I want to get it going. I want to make sure that I got it. I have so, I have like all the time in the world to open this legion. I mean, there might be like one or two monsters I missed on there. That breach is still open. I know I still got a little bit of time to do it and come back. I probably came back there too early as a matter of fact. Yeah, definitely did. Okay, so now... What am I doing? I'm just running around picking up... The very, very few pieces of loot I gotta pick up. And a lot... You know, there, there are times the map's gonna look like this. It's gonna look like I actually lost currency. Although I probably didn't actually lose currency because if you look... If, if you look in here, it's pretty obvious that I'd collected more than 27 chaos <laughs> in, in this. So here we got a few incubators, and I think the Diviner's Incubator is probably the lowest value incubator I even pick up. So we're going to do 50 maps here tonight, and then 50 maps in the morning. It's kind of what I usually do. Okay, Gloom Shrine right out front, that's nice. Extra Shrines, so this must have spawned Domination randomly, so that's always a pleasure to see. I'm gonna skip the Legion for now. Okay, yeah, I'll go ahead and open that because I figured the boss room was right here. Okay, so now every altar I spawn is gonna be higher value on average. Got an extra Breach, so that's important to see. That breach is still not closed. Kind of unfortunate. Well, I have extra breaches, so I'm going to focus a little more on looting. Keeping that uh, rampage up at max.
Legion's quite a bit of fun, you know, when you have a super strong character. Not so fun when your character can't handle it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you got the strong character, it's a lot of fun. Of course, Tornado Shot's excellent for it. Tornado Shot, strong Tornado Shot character with Gloom Shrine is just absolutely ridiculous. Well, it would seem that I actually had a boo-boo there and missed a breach, that last third breach. I might have killed a few monsters in it, but not much. So that's a mistake I don't usually make, but it does happen occasionally. Oh my god, what do I have to do to open this? Okay, there we go. Okay, so I think what you saw there, you saw a bunch of stuff randomly spawn. So, what was that, like three scarabs and uh, an exalted orb? I'm 90% sure that Exalted Orb actually came from the Incubator. So isn't that interesting? Uh, yeah, when, when I did the 100 maps, I was able to confirm that at least 3 of my 12 Exalted Orbs came from Incubators. It is an extremely common drop from the Incubator that just drops random currency. Th these Incubators really do... They, they have some sort of built-in mechanic where they like re-roll the item like 10 times or more. I don't know what it is. I'm even using fossil incubators and I quite often see fossils that are worth like 5 chaos and above spawn from it. It's pretty wild. Brothers stash out the strong box. 500% quantity from monsters. I think we're sitting pretty on around map number t 10 or 11, maybe. So that's a good sign. Seeing the first one of those that early. I am projecting, whereas with the previous farm, I, I would be projecting five brother stashes in 100 maps. I think with Legion... My chances increase ever so slightly. I'm gonna I'm gonna go on a limb and say six. And no, I'm not gonna farm 500 maps in like two days to find out. But there always is next season. I suspect any day now we're gonna find out what the map pool is. Oh, can I get a holla for cemetery in the map pool? If it is. Please say so down in the, in the comments below. We need to know as soon as we can. What is this? Goofy ass item. Oh, double abandoned wealth. Hey. Not double seven years bad luck, but not double the immortal, but hey, you know, double something decent. Yeah, I got double the immortal, like, once off of, uh, stream yesterday. <laughs> I think it was yesterday. That would have looked pretty if I got an Americuth emblem out of that, too, on the same screen. But no. There we go. Got Delirium. In a weird map. Weird super linear map. Oh, look. Exalted Orb from Delirium. <laughs> what did I say about that? It's pretty common.
Oh boy. What? What is that? I don't even know where that came from. I, that could have been anything. Definitely not a strong box, though. I don't think it was a hunter trader. I don't. Definitely not a strong box. Not a breach. Not a legion. Actually, actually, that could have been a legion monster. Actually, I'll double check the replay. Huh. Second one, fairly early. I don't know, something like map number 30, something like that. Nothing too crazy. Fairly typical results. And Legion Reward up to seven stacks. Well, well. I like it. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, a random pack of monsters right outside the map. That's not something you see every day. I mean, that could have been Alk and Go Brothers stash right there. That was basically an Alk and Ghost stash. I don't know. Maybe, cause I don't even think that was hunted traders. I didn't see them fighting each other. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Where's the map boss? Why the hell up here? I love Breach for keeping this Rampage stacks up. So nice. Wait, I thought I picked it up already. <laughs> okay. That would have been insane if I forgot to pick it up. Where that's placed in the map, I could have potentially forgot. I actually did forget. Man, that would have been awful. Yeah, uh, that that's actually never happened to me though. Jinx. I thought I remember seeing somebody dropped a mirror in heist and didn't didn't get it back. They, like, kept clearing instead of just turning around and taking it. Like, he could have taken it home without initiating the heist, but he decided to run it. And then, he, I guess he just, like, mega choked or something and died. <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh, man. Cannot imagine that. Yeah, I saw that. I, that was like, uh, I don't even remember if I finished the video. I just knew, I just knew what happened because people were talking about it. Like, what an idiot didn't go turn a thing back in. I'm like, oh my god, I don't even want to see that. <laughs> 
kind of thing that makes you go. <laughs> oh, red star just popping out of nowhere. What? Brother stashes everywhere. Can't stop me. Oh man. Two maps in a row. Who said this card's rare? <laughs> I love seeing you guys respond to that. <laughs> Cause you're all like, never in a million years would that have happened to me. I'm like, bro, that's happened to me like a dozen times this league. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, or at least half a dozen times this thing. Granted, I've farmed like 300 of them, but still. I promise you, it's not that rare. It's nowhere near as rare as a doctor card, that's for sure. I mean, who the hell gets two doctor cards back to back? Nobody, nobody does that. <laughs> oh, I thought... <laughs> okay, there's my six link. Guaranteed six link coming in. Hey, this map's still not done yet. I could get another one, you know. I could get a set... Two brother... Three brother stashes in two maps. It has happened before. Once. I think. Actually, actually, no, I don't think it's happened before. Not not that crazy, I don't think. Should happen now, though. Three legions on top of one another, huh? Salted orb. It's always fun. Second roll, exalted orb. Okay. Can I get a number three? Three exalted orbs? Maybe? Can I get Gloom Shrine actually? That would be great. There we go. And the boss. I'll do that. I'm doing things way out of order here. Let's get back in sync. I don't even know what I'm doing right now. I think I got about all that breach though. So that's good. Well, time to loot some stuff. My mana is gone. I kind of made sure that, yeah, actually, hold on, let me make sure there's nothing to loot down here. I know it's going to slow me down. I should start down here, work my way up, because I'm about to be moving a lot slower than this. I don't usually leave this much stuff looted. What? A legion boss. Still alive. All right, all. We're going to jump right into this conclusion of 100 maps with Legion instead of Harbingers. Definitely felt like the potential was there. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what the results are yet because kind of just jumping right into this on the fly. Uh, in front of you, you can see I had a total of four brother stashes, and I'm pretty sure all four of those came in like the first 40 maps. <laughs> I did the entire back session, the last 50 maps, didn't get a single one. Uh, actually, really, truly horrendous RNG on the last 50 maps. Uh, even the first 50 maps wasn't that good, except for getting four brother stashes. Uh, I was expecting bare minimum five on average, uh, probably more like six, because Legion should be producing more than Harbinger. I, I'd imagine I'd get on average at least one more in 100 runs. <coughs> Maybe not. Well, uh, brother stashes aren't that big of a deal as far as you know. Just a hundred maps. It's hard to, hard to to uh, anticipate exactly what you're going to get. But 
Uh, it is easier to anticipate emblems and exalted orbs, which I also think were pretty bad. Uh, remember on the 500 map session, a uh, few of those 100 map sessions, I only got 12 exalted orbs. I said that was really bad. Now, I'm not doing harbingers, which means, of course, I'm getting fewer exalted shards. I'm getting... Um, I have no opportunity to get a c converted exalted orb. But... Obscured incubators give exalted shards like crazy, actually, and maybe not, I'd say at least at 50% of the threshold that Harbingers give exalted shards, if I just had to kind of guess. And uh, as well as just uh, ornate incubators, which is the one that drops the pure currency, also gives exalted orbs uh, fairly frequently. Um, for how often you might think it would. I, I didn't see hardly any of those. I, I saw a lot of those earlier. Like before I made this test run here on, on this video. But uh, apparently I just really, really missed the mark on Exalted Orb. Uh, only having 11 counting uh, Exalted Shards. Actually, let's see. Yeah, I got way more than 12 Exalted Shards. So at least one, maybe two of these are Exalted Shards coming up. Uh, next on the list here, we got uh, Timeless America Emblems. I said in the first test run I did, I found 21 of these in 100 maps, so I only found 13 here. I figured the average is probably around 15 to 20, and I certainly hit below the mark <laughs> on that. No other way to say it. I, I think this is probably fairly bad luck. Um, I I'm seeing America uh, Legions pretty often in maps, and knowing that there's... On average, probably about, I don't know, maybe 30 or 40 uh, America splinters that drop in each map. 1% of the time per splinter, uh, there it's going to convert to an emblem. Uh, so uh, a great deal of these timeless uh, America emblems are simply just splinters adding up. I think I only found maybe like 8, maybe 8 raw timeless America emblems in total felt very very low uh, of course uh, a huge amount of awakened sextants because this loop filter is so strict that it's only kind of a, it is allowing me to see awakened sextants and so that is sort of the premier bubblegum currency that i'm getting <laughs> if you will uh, it's hard to think of awakened sextants as a bubblegum currency but yeah kind of is in this case uh 18 templar emblems um i'm pretty sure i found more america emblems than templar emblems before but i don't know maybe not uh i should be finding more temp uh templar emblems than america actually uh so that looks i guess about right maybe it might maybe a little low too i'm not sure uh okay so some divine orbs a few screaming invitations only three a huge number of stacked decks, yeah. So I, I seem to find nearly 200 stacked decks when I do this, and um, this is actually kind of invigorating me to try this sort of strategy, or at least to go Legion early on in the next season, because stacked decks are maybe on paper not really worth more than they are later in the season, but certainly in reality they are, because you can hit a jackpot drop super early and it can absolutely catapult you uh, so that you can like buy a bunch of like high-value uniques for dirt cheap arguably and and that sort of thing speaking of uniques i got a tinker skin that's worth what's this say 283 chaos why, why is it worth 283 chaos well because it was actually a, a legion six link unique that dropped so occasionally a six link unique uh, drops from the legion encounter this is part of it uh, it is obviously a fairly lucky drop but it, i think i'm seeing an average one or two every uh 200 every 100 maps and occasionally it is going to be an item that is actually worth something to some build now tinker skin is not a super popular item it's not certainly not in the meta this season i think um, it might, it, there might be some, but, but as far as, you know, traps are concerned, it's certainly part of that meta. I found two soul takers. Uh, let's see, a couple of banded wealth. Okay, so that was, would have been on the highlights. Uh, definitely found a little something there. And, yeah, just to give you an idea how bad this was in the second half, uh, the only highlight that came from the back 50 maps was the, uh, back-to-back -back exalted orbs that you would have just seen. <laughs> That's it. I mean, that was really bad. So I'm interested to see how much currency per hour I made on this, though, even with this sort of atrocious RNG. 
Uh, first, of course, I was able to level a lot of gems like usual. I think this is probably the last time I'm going to do this here. Uh, we got how many? 24. Yeah, 24 uh, enhanced support. So that's kind of maximum leveling there. And let's see if we get any rank 4s. Each rank f or level 4 will count for towards the total for at a equivalent value of 4 exalts. Because I can certainly sell it for at least 4 exalt. So we got 1 down. <laughs> 2 down. By the way, down has the same chances up, I believe. Uh, nothing, 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 nothing. Oh my god, 3 down. Okay, 1 up. Nothing, nothing. I just want 2 up, that's all. That's all I want. F 5 down. Man, if I ever found five up in this number, that'd be insane. Okay, uh, oh wow. <laughs> the last two both went up. I thought I was going to come out pretty dry with just uh, two. Or sorry, just one at level four. But no, actually the very last two that I clicked on both went up. So that was kind of interesting. Definitely uh, changed them a lot more than I expected there. Uh, we'll just leave these here for now. Okay, so we're going to add a total of... 12 exalts to the top here the top shows we're looking at here uh 92 don't pay attention to the x per hour that's not accurate because that's not even counting day one um 92.9 so you can see the investment was 19.46 was the, at the beginning of the video there so 92 i mean i'm pretty sure i can do this math in my head but hey you know just to Keep myself in check here. 104.9. That was kind of my gross here. So I got to take that number minus the 19.46. This is the grand total investment of this farming session. Uh, you can see this uh, could have very easily hit <laughs> over 20x an hour if I had gotten some more exalted orbs, emblems, and or brothers stashes here. Uh, so we're going to take this number divided by five hours. So before it was taking me six hours to do this farm with Harbinger instead of Legion. Legion takes longer to do. There's more stuff to click, more stuff to kill. Kind of got to go around this around the circuit twice uh, to kill everything as well. Uh, just I, I do one shot everything basically though, even bosses when I'm in the heat of the moment mapping. But I was able to do this farm way faster than before, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, the loop filter, increasing the strictness greatly, uh, allowed me to just sort of fly through the map and loot on the go for the most part. And I was able to finish each map very, very quickly. And I, I also mentioned that if I just did the same Harbinger farm that I did during the 500 maps, it was like, dropped from six hours to four hours so this was six hours to five hours uh for a hundred map session uh pretty pretty good stuff i think so we're going to take this number divided by five and it comes out to like exactly what the last sort of test run i did where i scrapped the video which is <laughs> basically exactly uh 17x an hour and on that video i only got two brother stashes and did a little bit better on the exalted orbs and america emblems things like that um oh yeah and i got three enlightened supports in that one i got no uh no enlightened supports on this one the average hunter map session not gonna see an enlightened support or an unnatural instinct or anything like that so that's good uh, okay, let's just kind of see. A little curious about the scarabs here. Let's see how many scarab total. We got 864 in scarabs. Uh, again, so kind uh, of kind of a bonus drop. This is going to be fairly unusual for a hundred map session, but I, I don't I see no reason not to count it here. The tinker skin, um, six linked tinker skin there. Um, two soul takers, one call of the brotherhood, and then everything else is kind of like kind of cheap. Oh, there is one void battery there too. I guess. Okay. All right. I think that basically concludes everything there. Uh, final thoughts on this particular farm. We're moving into next season. I think this is definitely the last time I'm going to do some sort of like semi-juicing super turbo speed uh, cemetery farm. Uh, I think I got this basically figured out. I do like this farm. I think it's a little bit more enjoyable it's not quite as relaxing as the harbinger farm because i have to pay close attention to the legions they're spawning but with the gloom shrine it is still pretty relaxing uh, pretty easy going and 
The quality of life that shrine brings and the extra speed and efficiency at the cost of another sextant, but still getting, you know, an extra shrine with a whole bunch of monsters that way. It just seems like, honestly, kind of a no-brainer. I'm a little bit surprised I didn't, I didn't really improve my time all that much, but I think maybe I was a little more uh, relaxed and not quite so intense on trying to be as fast as possible on this 100 map session right here that you see. One last thing I'm going to do. I'm just going to throw these in here real quick. We're going to open all those stacked decks, you know, might as well for fun because I got a ton of stacked decks. Okay, yeah, yeah, you can see I'm trying to sell these uh, currently for 4.6, so we'll put that one there. If I got if I start loading up on a few of these things and you know th this is like third to the last day of the season, so Kind of hard to sell stuff at this point. Stuff's actually selling quite a bit, even like one full week with the season left. But I have noticed the last couple days really dropped off. Uh, okay. So let's for fun see stack decks. This should motivate me a little bit. Uh, stack decks are a big part of Legion because of the stack deck incubator, as well as um, the deck war horde chest, things like that. Um, is that all of them? I think so. Yes, it's okay. My mana is gone. Well, let's see if we get anything spectacular. Here we go. Now, my loop filter is allowing me to see stack decks that are worth like 2 or 3 chaos or above. Something like that. Or cards, I should say. Actually, I'm just going to leave everything on the ground. So you can see it at the end. This is 196 stack decks. You know, not, not, not a crazy number. Nothing wild. I would like to get at least one card that's worth like a full exalt. Or close to it. Like a samurai's eye or something like that. Or an apothecary, that would be nice. <laughs> what we're going to be saying here in the future. We've got a new season coming out in one week's time. In a couple days. New grand reveal coming out in less than 12 hours. Everybody's excited right now to see that. They've been super quiet, haven't released hardly any, any, any information. Uh, a couple only major things we know at this point is that they're not doing any sort of major nerfs. It's pretty obvious uh, to items. Um, there might be uh, very few nerfs, like to omniscience, maybe. But uh, aside from that, nothing too crazy. Because there is no manifesto, so nothing... No major changes there they have to explain, I guess. Is what most people are thinking. Well, these stack decks are looking pretty poor, aren't they? I mean, they're not even popping up anything. <laughs> I'm, I don't even have like a saint's treasure or a hoarder or something. That's really odd. All right, last round. Oh wow, I only had that. Okay, there's something that's at least halfway decent, I guess. I don't know what that's worth, but I'll find out in a second. I don't know if I've ever seen that card before. Price of loyalty. Well, this is... <laughs> Bad RNG continues. Wow, thank you. A chaotic disposition. <laughs> okay. Well, I definitely lost money. <laughs> I was stacked like big time. Uh, let's see what this uh, price of loyalty is worth. It's... Um... Oh, actually, this is close to... Uh, this is close to a red star, I guess. It's, um, it's registering at 45 chaos, but... Um, cheap as 160 chaos. So it's the only decent, decent one I got. I suppose I'll put that right here. Try to set. Oh, not that one. Something like that. And we'll deposit these. Get another six link body armor. Woohoo! Oh my god, astral plate. But it's only. Uh oh, wait, I think that's what it said. 
Right, uh, an astral plate with a conqueror influence of some kind. Apparently it says 2x, but I kind of doubt it. Uh, whatever though, I'll just throw it in here for 90. Because it's only item level 80. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, I'm, I'm just like pumping out videos like crazy right now. Uh, at the back end of my vacation. There's a whole bunch of stuff I still want to come out with. Um, really trying to, you know, move forward into the next season. But there's still stuff I want to post about this previous season. Uh, namely, going to take a deep dive uh, and, and share with you guys my detailed thoughts on the... Hmm. Excuse me, the spec I ran this league. So I'll be going into like every single point and why I chose it in my spec, and then uh, every single thing about my gear and why I chose the gear. I'm just, some of you are probably a little curious on why I have so many uniques and the gull and yeah, two mirrored <laughs> items. Seems like an odd. Uh, seems almost like an abomination of, of gearing going on here. <laughs> uh, so yeah, stay tuned. Those videos will be coming out soon. Of course, we're gonna have the uh, reaction video to the new um, re grand reveal for Sentinel League. That that'll be pretty exciting. You guys can see my thoughts on that. Anyway, uh, keep resting up. I know you're probably resting, getting ready, anticipating the next season. Uh, just checking out some videos, keeping yourself uh, rested but hype as well at the same time. Uh, I'll, I'll catch you guys uh, here in a, another couple hours, basically, <laughs> if I get these videos out as fast as I hope. Bye for now.